Leo Ascendant, Leo Rising, what's up? How you be? This is G coming with you and your Astralo G talking about the rest of July 2020 video. We're going to talk about Mars. We're going to talk about five things. Five things that are going to affect you directly because you're Leo. You are fire. Leo is all about creative energy, the force. Some would say the source. This is you, Leo. It is time to catch fire. Mars is in a fire sign right now. I'm going to go into that. We're going to talk about, I'm going to tell you where this happens in your life because then it will directly affect you. If you're Leo sun, Leo rising, Leo moon, if you got any planets in Leo energies, and if you don't know anything about any of that, comment your digits below. I can help you to understand that. Better navigate by having dates and by seeing the cycles within those dates. Five things. We're going to rock it off with the number five and we're going to go backwards down to the number one. Jet set. Let's fly. Let's go. <laughs> such a huge event because there's going to be, I want you to do me a favor. First of all, thank you for being here. I never take it for granted when someone clicks that button and watches and then makes a comment. I'm honored, honored to hear the thoughts, honored to hear a response. Doesn't mean it has to be, hey, I love what you're saying. It could most definitely be, I disagree. That's fine. I love to engage. I love the rapport. Let me hear your thoughts. Leo, better yet, Leo, let me hear what's in your heart because Leo is heart energy. That's Leo energy. You know what I'm talking about. Leos have big hearts. Leo is all about the heart. And this also means the physical heart. So when we talk about energies, it is talking about the material, physical, tangible, but also the non-tangible also the 5D. Leo energy is my physical heart and my, my, ooh, I love you heart, right? That, that, that essence of we connect, I feel you. I have these forms of uniquely expressing how I feel, how I think, who I am. This is Leo, the courageous lion, brave lion with the chest poofed straight out like I'm standing up there on Pride Rock and nobody is going to stop me. Nobody is above me. I rule. This is Leo energy. And there is an area in your life where you express this divinely, where it comes through so strongly, Leo, where it comes through where it's we see an element of the true you. There are Leos that I've met and I can literally see the fire coming out of their eyes. It's amazing because fire, Leo is fire. Leo is fixed fire. So when I look at your chart and when we look at the energies for the rest of July, Mars is a key player. Number five, at mid-July, we are just coming off of Mercury being in retrograde. So what does that mean in my life? What the hell is a Mercury retrograde? Do I need to know all this? Well, here's the thing. Mercury is how we think, how we communicate. So when we are, when our thinking is going backwards, when we're in a retrograde, we're rethinking things. We're really hunkering down and we're saying, okay, gosh, it's like a rerun. I like to say, or rereading a book a second time, you know, watching a movie again. When we go through that, we pick up on things we didn't catch the first time. And this happens all the time in life. We, we experience something again, and it might take two, three, four, five times of that experience to understand, oh, okay, now I got it, right? Some of us say, hey, it took me like 15 years to go through the same shit, and I finally got it, right? So in a way, that's a big part of Mercury, because Mercury is how I think, how I relate, how I talk, how I speak, how I communicate. This is all Mercury stuff, which, by the way, rules Gemini. Mercury being in Cancer energy is emotions. This is a really big deal, because in 2020, emotions Emotions, cancer energy, home, family, cancer energy, mom, cancer energy, feminine energy, cancer energy, nurturing, cancer energy, empathy, cancer energy, understanding. All of this is cancer energy. Cancer family, big, big, big deal, family. Because who is in your tribe? 
are they only people that you are related to by blood? Is that what your family is? In a very small, micro, detailed way, that is what it is. But as we experience, meet, relate, we go out into the world, we find out that there are those that we have no blood relations to at all, and somehow there's this connectivity. We then put them in this other bucket of family, which is my tribe, my community, right? And so this is why with here at Astrology, I have been talking about unity within the community because all the emphasis in this cancer energy of who is my family, how many different buckets or realms or circles do I have of family? Some would call them like your friend bucket or just people that you relate to. But we go deep. So Leo, this is a big deal because your sign, Leo, comes right after the sign of cancer. So once we get through all this cancer stuff, all the planets are then slowly but surely making their way into your sign, okay? And so when we talk about the 13th, the 14th, the 15th of this month, Mercury, how I think, is now moving direct. So at this time, all of our personal planets are direct and we feel a little bit more on track. We feel a little bit clearer in our thinking. However, I do want to throw in a word of caution. Mercury, our thinking, does best in an air sign, right? Because Mercury has wings. But cancer energy is watery. And it is the emotions. And so when we have water, when we have emotions, when we have feelings, but it also has a tendency to slow the information down because Mercury, think about it, if you have wings and you're trying to fly and all of a sudden your wings get wet, what happens, right? Your flight isn't as agile. You can't turn on a dime. You're slowed down. You're heavier because water weighs down your wings, right? Water weighs down your clothing. So you kind of want to think about it like that because then it helps to understand, okay, that's why. Like for me, my words, it's like, okay, all of a sudden I don't know how to spell the simplest of words. And I mean simple words, not, you know, like I'm sitting here trying to spell the word other. Oh, T-H-E-R. Yeah. See, that's so weird. That's not like me at all. And so this is that. This is Mercury in a water sign. And so you're thinking, your communication, your understanding, because what happens is we're understanding with our emotions and with our feeling. And this is good. This is a good thing. So what we want to do is we want to emphasize what it is we need, because this is what this cancer energy is. It's all about what do I need for emotional security in my life? What do I need? Who is part of my family? Who is no longer part of my family? Who doesn't, who doesn't qualify to be there anymore? Because I realize they do not add to my emotional satisfaction in my life. This is, this is pretty important because what we're doing is we are understanding I've got a lot of responsibilities. Where's my famous lighter? It helps to talk about the polarities in astrology, which is what astrology is. It is a science of a complete series of frequencies. And here is, here is a set of polarities. I've got Cancer over here, and I've got Capricorn down here. They're polar opposites. And for the last two years, Capricorn, which is my work, my responsibilities in life, my duties, my career, my ambitions, and Cancer, which is my family, my home, my feelings, my tribe, my feminine energy, how I'm nurtured, these have been doing this, this tug of war, so to speak, this push-pull energy, this feeling of lighting up this end, but lighting up this end. Like, I got to do this, but I got to do this. I got to do this, but I got to do this. So it's been tricky, right? It's tricky when you got to do both things simultaneously. You're being pulled in both directions. So Leo understanding that this has been happening in your area of work and in another area of your life that's hidden from you. And this area that's hidden from you is your emotions, is your emotional security, is your emotional satisfaction. So Leo, if you have dreams that are very emotionally charged, this could also mean daydreams, but understanding there's this level of family, of home, of my tribe that 
comes from past life, comes from, if you don't like past life, comes from family ancestry. We can do that. Family ancestry, so your lineage, so your heritage, so you're looking back, wow, where were where was my grandparents, grandparents from, right? You're going through the family tree type of thing. So we, we look at that, but that's a mystery. You look and you think, I don't know any of that. So for Leo Ascendant Leo Risings, it is a mystery. It's a, I don't have any of that. I don't have those roots. I don't have those ties. And so for Leos, there's this learning of this because it's been a mystery. And so having that house for you, it's in, all in your 12th house. When I say 12th house, it's the house of mystery. So what we want to do is understand there's experiences in your everyday life where they're going to trigger things. They're going to trigger things within yourself. I know it's difficult because when it's things that are hidden and they're part of our emotional security, some of that we feel it's hidden and it's supposed to stay hidden. But the whole point of the experiences and in the relating with others, with people that are important with us, they trigger and they bring up these things. It's to help move away the dust. It's to help open a door and pull something out of the closet that hasn't been talked or seen or looked at or observed in a long time. So it can be painful. It can be difficult. It can be really uncomfortable. Let's talk about the thinking, okay? Having cancer, having your thinking, having mercury, your planet of thinking going through your 12th house means there might be a lot of dream or has been a lot of dream activity. And if there hasn't been, expect it to take off a bit because you have that cancer energy all in your 12th. And now mercury, the thinking is going forward. And the 12th house is our, we go to sleep and it's our dream state. So Leo, let's get to the nitty gritty. Let's get to number three. Have I been keeping track? I have no idea. What happens when Mars gets involved. Mars is a big deal. Mars is in fire. And this is what I'm liking, the fiery Mars situation. Mars for you is taking off. It's starting something new for you. And this will be developing over the next six months. So Leo energy publishing, long distance journeys and traveling. Now in some areas of the world, you are not allowed to do this right now because we are all going through the pandemic. But because you have Aryan energy there, what's occurring is thinking of new ways to travel long distances, right? Rethinking that. This is about a belief around all of that. For me, how I've been doing this is I've been traveling long distance via YouTube. I know that might seem strange. How does that work exactly? Well, you can travel visually, right? I also do it in other ways up here. You know, like there's uh, astral traveling. We don't need to get into that right here, but there's lots of ways that this can be done. And having the Aryan energy, having Mars there means there's a new thing about your body and your ability to travel, but not just travel. This ninth house placement for you, it's all about also understanding a new philosophy, a new belief, a new religion, a new ideology on life, but in terms of, you know, spirituality, in terms of religion, there's all of this going on, but you're kind of starting something. You will be starting something if you already haven't. Now, if you have planets there, then, then you would right away have felt something, but you can expect the next six months Mars will be working with you. And this is beautiful because what this is going to do, Mars being in fire sends a beautiful trine, Leo, to you, which means Mars's fire in the Aries energy lights up your Leo energy. It lights it up. So this is your first house. And this also is your physical body. When I say it lights it up, it's going to make things easier physically. It's going to make you, it's going to make your fire shine. You are going to be very radiant for the next six months. You're going to be very creatively, uniquely expressing. You're going to look bedazzling to people when they look at you, Leo. They're going to be like, oh, where have you been? All of a sudden, you've got the spotlight on you. Seriously, for the next six months, for the next six months, number two, for the next six months, you're going to be looking at areas of your life. You're going to be understanding that that thing I talked about earlier, the, the hidden, there's going to be some extremely uncomfortable stuff that goes on. There's going to be things that challenge your belief. 
the direct, the thinking, the communication, they're going to directly challenge things that you believe. They're going to directly challenge your ideas and your beliefs about freedom. They're going to directly, probably likely pull up hidden, likely hidden beliefs that you had. And this is good to know because it's just all this ego energy. Okay, Mars ego energy. So it's going to pull up some stuff that you were not aware of that you had within you. Hidden judgments, hidden beliefs. You know, when you look at somebody and you're like, oh, but shame on them. You know, that kind of thing where we make quick judgments on somebody because Aryan energy is very impulsive. And so there's a, there's a, there's a stress that comes, but the point of the stress is to bring all that to your consciousness, to bring all that to your light, to your being, to you, for you to see, okay, I'm now aware of this. And I, I, I didn't know that about me. It was, I just, I wasn't aware of it or I've done it and I've just let it go. And I thought, Hey, nobody else noticed either. So it's okay. But no, now someone's checking you on it. And so this is a time that we're, we're really embracing all these things that are being brought to our awareness about ourselves. And we're saying, okay, I want to be the change. I want to, I want to not just, you know, wish for change and hope for change. It's time to be the change. Number one area of your, of that we're going to talk about for you at the end of the month of July, because honestly, from the 25th to the 29th, there's some struggles that are going on. A lot of these struggles have to do with the way we talk when we think we communicate, but they're not going to be all bad because along with the stress and the tension that we're going to have, we're also going to have this other divine energy that comes in and it's help. This divine help happens in your area of Gemini energy for you. And I like this because your Gemini energy is in your 11th house in groups. So you're going to find assistance through people that you consider friends. There's going to be assistance there. And that assistance, it you got to be cautious with this, okay? Because even though there's this assistance, be clear that you may see, it may be a little delusional at times because they come in and it's like, oh my God, this is too good to be true. Well, it could be too good to be true if you don't keep in check the reality, okay, the tangible things like, can I see it to believe it? Or if someone makes promises, you know, you got to see that they're, you know, paying out, that they're making good on what they, on what they said they would do or what they agreed upon. It's, it's, it's kind of a testing of that, which is what I like about July. There's a lot of opportunity for growth here. The number one thing, all right, Leo, the number one thing is we are at the butt end of July going into August. Mercury again is being challenged. Now, I know I said what I like. I like it because, again, this whole month of July, there's a lot of fiery stuff going on by way of self, okay? And, and like I said, you're going to be in the spotlight. But understand, it doesn't mean that it's going to be just all, okay, I got to just, you know, the wind is behind my back. I'm going downhill not downhill in a bad way, but I can just, just coast. You, there will be challenges to communication. There will be challenges to how you think. There will be challenges to your belief, but it's to make you look at something from a different angle. It's to make you see that you, there's 360 degrees to, to something. There's not just, you know, I can see it this way and this way and this way. There's this, but look, if you look at it from all 360 degrees, you'll realize that what you believed, when you look at it from over there, you can see how then all of a sudden what you believed was so easy to, well, unbelieve, right? To be something very different. So Leo, I know this seems like very jumbled, but this is kind of how this month goes. Our thinking Mercury going direct is supposedly going to be helping but it's still in the cancer waters. So the new moon, I'm going to give you a nugget to walk away with, but I always have an extra nugget because I like to save the best for last. The nugget is the new moon. I want you to make your new moon wishes. New moons like this new moon because it's in the sign of cancer. It's in your 12th house. And this is kind of what I would call a critical new moon because it's at a late degree. And anytime a planet or things are at a late degree, we get this, we get this mastery expression of the energy going okay and the moon is at 28 27 the sun is at 28 27 it happens on july 20th make your intentions place your wishes on that day now yes this is in your 12th house 
but I'm going to tell you what it means because your 12th house is hidden from you. And so that's the beauty of astrology. I know I'm losing all my light for some reason, the sun. So the beauty of astrology is that you get to understand the cycles and the frequencies even when you're like, okay, everything's muddied right now. I'm not clear, right? So you go to talk to people, you talk to friends, you bounce ideas off of them, you get feedback to get clarity. Astrology can give you that feedback also. Not only, but in addition to. It can either confirm or deny things, and that's what I love about it. 12th house stuff is family, heritage, lineage. There's things from past life. There's things from your parents and from their mom and dad and their mom and dad's mom and dad, their grandparents and all that, right? Generations ago, back in the old country, there's, there's stuff there that's being released. And there's this new clarity for you now. In this life, right now, doesn't matter what grandma and grandpa said, doesn't matter what mom and dad say, you know, Leo, what you need for your emotional security now, because you have gone through so many experiences of what doesn't work for you. So we don't always have to know to know what we need to know. Many times, it's a simple process of elimination. I know what doesn't work for me. So Leo, on the 20th, you're going to make sure that you hone in with your wishes on what it is you now know what's left, what works, what gives you emotional security. What is it in your life that you need to feel emotionally satisfied? What it, is it that gives you a recalibration of your sacred space. Leo, this is your time to establish that. Make good on this wish. You've got the power because it's in your 12th house. And that 12th house placement is dreams. So you may get more information in your dreams. And if you do, write some stuff down because Mercury is trucking through your 12th house and Mercury brings information. Mercury brings nuggets. Get that notebook by the bed, Take some notes. Do what you got to do, Leo. Pay attention to the dream world. Pay attention to your ancestors coming through into the dreamland to give you what you need for your emotional security so that you can get through the rest of 2020, Leo. This is for you. Yeah.